we're going to see something of Medjugorje, a place to my heart as a priest, as I've been there 16 times, and each time I go there, I find there's something more to learn and some more profit to draw from it. Medjugorje's whole meaning is simply this, that the mother of, mother of Jesus of Nazareth is appearing there, and she's bringing an urgent message for today's world, our sinful world, our bewildered world, our war-threatened world, our peace-needing world. So that's what she's bringing, peace. And she's bringing her message through six young people whom we call the visionaries. You're going to see something of them presently. You're going to see some shots of this enchanting little village in the hills of Croatia, and you're going to get something of its meaning. But Medjugorje is essentially that. It's the mother of God coming at a juncture in church history which particularly needs her guidance. She's the queen of prophets, you see, and she comes at those moments. Think of Guadeloupe, think of Fatima, think of Lourdes, think of Beaurang, think of La Salette, uh, where she's come precisely at those moments of church history when we need uh, the particular guidance and consolation from God. Yes, so we're going to see something of Medjugorje. You're going to enjoy it, you're going to find it exciting, and she's going to encourage you, as she encourages all of us, to know and love God better. Ten years ago, on the 24th of June, 1981, the Virgin Mary appeared to six teenagers on a hillside above a remote village in Yugoslavia. Medjugorje has in ten years come from total obscurity into the limelight of the 20th century. From sleepy rural village, it has been transformed into an international place of pilgrimage. In the Roman Catholic world, it now ranks third after Fatima and Lourdes. But in the beginning, things were not so easy. To the local communist authorities, the thousands of believers were an acute embarrassment. God did not exist, at least officially, in Yugoslavia, and so the authorities did all in their power to stop things. The parish priest was imprisoned, the children arrested, subjected to psychological tests, and the hills where the apparitions were taking place ringed by police and barbed wire. Foreigners were not allowed to stay in the village and had to travel miles to attend the church ceremonies. Today, all this has changed. Helpless against the flow, the authorities have had to condone it and now even encourage it. Against the background of a bankrupt Yugoslav economy, Medjugorje has prospered. Marble paving stones around the church replace muddy fields and every visitor has a place to stay. The villagers have opened their homes and their hearts to the pilgrims and everyone is building on extra rooms. Over one million visit Medjugorje each year and today the village can cope with the needs of the modern pilgrim. Religious tourism accounts today for one-fifth of Yugoslavia's total earnings from tourism. It all began here on the hill of Podbrdo, a hot and dusty climb for the pilgrim today. On a summer evening, four children were out walking when the Virgin Mary appeared to them. None of them dared approach, and it was not until they returned with friends the following day that the Virgin spoke to them. Four of them, Maria, Vitska, Ivan and Yakov, still have apparitions daily, while the other two now only see her once a year. The Virgin urges people to pray and fast. She calls us to personal conversion, confession, peace and daily mass. I have come to tell the world that God is truth. He exists. In him is good fortune and fullness of life. I have come here as the Queen of Peace to tell the world that peace is essential for the salvation of the world. In God is found true happiness, who is the source of peace. My dear children, I call you to peace. Live it in your heart and around you, so that everyone may know this peace which does not come from you, but from God. Dear children, 
I desire you to be reflections of Jesus, who enlightens this unfaithful world, which is walking in darkness. I wish that all of you may be a light to all and witness to the light. Dear children, you are not called to darkness, you are called to light. Therefore, live the light in your lives. Here Witzke, the most vivacious and relaxed of the six, who until two years ago was ill with a brain tumour, leads pilgrims up the hill in prayer. The Madonna had requested that a rosary be said on the hill for the three days preceding the 10th anniversary. Pilgrims almost always leave with a lasting impression of the faith, joy and inner peace of the visionaries as they cope with the daily onslaught of the crowds outside their homes, with pilgrims constantly at the door asking questions and favours, wanting to talk to them, to be prayed with. It is surprising to find such normal and unassuming people. The question most frequently asked to both Witzka and Maria is, what does the Virgin Mary look like when she appears to them? The Madonna always has a grey dress and a white veil. She has black hair, blue eyes and comes down on a cloud. The manner in which she comes, she comes either happy or sad, according to the message. The Madonna is always very natural. Why does she think she was chosen? Perché tu pensi che tu sei stata scelta? Non lo so. I don't know. It's been ten years now. She must have some idea why the, Ma the Madonna would have chosen six simple people from a village like Medjugorje. Sono dieci anni adesso. Forse hai una idea perché la Madonna avrà scelto sei, gio sei giovani semplici così di quel villaggio qui. Ma noi abbiamo chiesto alla Madonna perché noi. We asked la Madonna, the Madonna. Detto, why us? Dato questa... The Madonna said, God has given me the possibility to choose, and I have chosen you. That was the answer, and that is the reason, and we have not asked more. What does Maria think is the most important of the messages which she's received from the Madonna? Quale tu pensi il messaggio più importante di quelli che hai ricevuto dalla Madonna? I think one message without the other is not complete. The messages which are always the most important are peace, prayer, conversion, confession and Holy Mass. When they are linked together, they are complete. One is linked to the other. In what way has it changed Maria's life? In che maniera ha cambiato la tua vita? Very much. Does she feel that it a burden? Does it ever feel to her just too much to expect of one mere human being to have to receive these messages every day? Non è peso, ma possibile più peso non messaggi. It is not a burden. The messages and the apparitions are not a burden. But what possibly weighs on us is the life we lead with the many pilgrims who come every day. They often expect so much from us that it is difficult to lead a normal life as before. Some Catholics have expressed doubts about Medjugorje. They prefer to await the Church's verdict on the apparitions. Others say that one should judge a tree by its fruit and quote the numerous conversions, healings and miracles that have taken place here. Well, I think that you have to open yourself uh, to anything to be able to receive it. And I think that if you doubt, that's because you come here and you're not open. I believe, I doubted, I didn't really believe at all. And within a few days, I was just so overwhelmed with the love and the peace and um, there's just a feminine quality that I, I really receive from it all, yeah. Have you ever had any doubts? There are those who say it simply isn't true. Never have I had a doubt. I know it's true. I love God. Well, I think the church has got to be really cautious because within the hands of the church is the responsibility of our faith. 
And so they must really be cautious and they must be the devil's advocates because here we have all the euphoria, all the enthusiasm, all the momentum is what is happening here, all the vibrant feelings. And so there needs to be a stabilizing influence to say, stand back, watch, wait, look. And if it's true, it will be authenticated. And if it isn't true, it's better that it's exposed. So I like the attitude of the church. Some describe their visit here as the turning point of their lives. Everyone talks about the messages and the peace they carry away with them. They return home and tell others they must go too. As the message travels around the religious communities of the world, many describe their trip to Medjugorje as a response to a summons. It's a calling. It has to be a calling. I'm not a traveler by heart. In fact, I've never gone really any place in my whole life. And um, I'm here. I mean, it's, it's calling, and you answer yes to it. Well, I think the, the signs of the times, we live in a dreadful period of time. I think that God's calling a lot of people to come back while there's still time. It's not so much an attraction. It's being invited. It's being asked. People just don't come halfway around the world to a place like Magigoria just for an attraction, it's, it's something in here, it's an invitation. I think it's very important. I think that it's bringing the family back together. I think that it's bringing the church together. And I think that it's bringing peace to the world. Well, I think Magigoria is something very special, but above all, it is a demonstration of love. People find love in one another, love in the Lord, love for each other. And that's very special about it. It's the overriding thing. People need love. Love is everything. With love, there is no famine, there is no war, there is no hatred. We have to learn to share. And Magigori is love. And how do we get to love? We get to love through prayer. Prayer is a conversation with God. I think Magigori is nothing else than teaching us how to pray and showing us how to love. The Franciscans say that they have hundreds of medically authenticated case histories testifying to miraculous healings which have taken place here, including a doctor from Naples who was healed of an inoperable cancer, Dr. Antonio. I know it was the Madonna who cured me because I prayed to her and the doctors told me they could do nothing to save my life. One day my stomach wound was open, inflamed and festering. The next it was closed and healed. My doctor said I was completely cured. I said, doctor, I have been to Medjugorje. What do you think? He said it was extraordinary, exceptional, unprecedented. Because of course doctors are not allowed to use the word miracle. But I know, and I am a doctor, that I was cured by a miracle from the Madonna of Medjugorje. Many visitors to Medjugorje leave with a new sense of purpose in their lives, a feeling of wholeness and of having received an emotional or spiritual healing. My second time to be in Medjugorje, I came last year and I truly believe that the Blessed Mother is here and that she is healing us. I've had cancer twice. I feel that I've been healed spiritually as well as physically. And I am celebrating my 25th anniversary with my husband who was here with me. So that's a blessing and that's a gift. The blessings, the, the healings, um, I feel centered and I feel healed. Pilgrims from the West have been flocking to Medjugorje for years. A most recent phenomenon is the influx of Eastern Europeans. They come to thank God and to pray for peace in their countries and in the world. Their money is worthless, even in Yugoslavia, so they camp in a huge tent. Some Catholic theologians see the apparitions at Medjugorje as being a continuation of the messages given by Our Lady at Fatima and the fall of communism in Eastern Europe as being closely linked to the events that have taken place here. In a recent message, Our Lady asked for a special novena so that her plans may be fully realized. 
she also, for the first time, mentioned the secrets of Fatima. Dear children, today, too, I am inviting you to pray, more now than ever before, since my plan has begun to be realized. Satan is strong, and he wants to upset my plans of peace and joy, and make you think that my son is not strong enough in his decisions. Therefore, dear children, I am inviting you to pray and fast more intensely than before. I would like you to offer up some sort of renunciation for the duration of nine days, so that with your help everything that I want to realize, according to the secrets that began in Fatima, may in fact be realized. I am asking you, dear children, to understand the importance of my coming and the seriousness of the situation. I want to save everyone's souls and offer them to God. Let us pray then, so that everything that I have started may be fully realized. Thank you for the response to my call. As a place of pilgrimage, Medjugorje is not exclusively Catholic. Many Orthodox, Protestant Jews, and even Hindus and Muslims have come here to see and to pray. We must respect everyone in his faith. One must never despise anyone because of his convictions. Believers have separated themselves from one another. But God controls all confessions, as a king his subjects, through his ministers. In God there are no religions, there are no divisions, but you men have made divisions. I think that Magigoria is for today, perhaps to teach many, all the religions of the world, that Our Lady is the mother of the world, and that when Jesus gave uh, his mother to us. He was actually giving his mother to everybody, all denominations, all over the world. In the calm of the evening, the apparitions still take place. Here, two of the visionaries, Maria and Yaakov, pray with the Madonna and then fall silent. During the apparition, they tell us, the room disappears. They are with the Virgin. They can talk with her, sing with her, pray with her, and even touch her. During this period, their lips can be seen to move as in conversation, but no words can be heard. Their eyes are fixed on the Virgin, and the intensity of the experience can clearly be seen on their faces. During this time, they are impervious to pain, and camera flashes do not cause them to blink. On the 25th of each month, the Madonna gives a message for the whole world. On this, the 10th anniversary of the apparitions, the message was as follows. Dear children, Today, on this great day which you have given to me, I desire to bless all of you and to say that these days, while I am with you, are days of grace. I desire to teach you and help you walk on the path to holiness. There are many people who do not desire to understand my messages and to accept with seriousness what I am saying. But you I therefore call and ask that by your lives and daily living you witness my presence. If you pray, God will help you discover the true reason for my coming. Therefore, little children, pray and read the sacred scriptures so that through my coming you discover the message in the sacred scriptures for you. 
Thank you for your response to my call. The events in Medjugorje are intensely church-centered. The daily life of the parish revolves not around the visionaries and their apparitions, but around the celebration of Holy Mass. The Eucharist is central to the parish life of Medjugorje. Once the visionaries are asked which for them was more important, their meetings with the Madonna or daily Mass, without hesitation they replied, the Holy Mass. The Mass is the greatest prayer of God, and you will never comprehend its grandeur. That is why you ought to be perfect and humble at Mass, and should prepare yourself for it. Dear children, I wish to call you to live the Holy Mass. There are many of you who have experienced the beauty of the Holy Mass, but there are some who come unwillingly. Live consciously the Holy Mass. Let every coming to Holy Mass be joyful. I would like to guide you spiritually, but I am unable to help you if you are not open. Just think, for instance, where your thoughts were yesterday during Mass. Your walk from home to Mass should be a time of preparation for the Mass. You must also receive communion with an open and pure heart. Purity of heart and openness. Do not leave the church without proper thanksgiving. Father Slavko Barbaric is the spiritual director of the visionaries. He is a qualified psychiatrist and speaks five languages fluently. Why Medjugorje? Why did the Madonna choose this place to reveal herself? Yeah, I always answer, we have to, to, to receive good answer and exact answer, we have to ask Our Lady, yeah. But we cannot ask and for this reason remain for us our reflections. And uh, I do not find the reason exactly why Medjugorje. I'm sure it, uh, Our Lady could mm, cho um, choose uh, every place. But this is a fact. And she said, I had cho chosen this parish because gave, uh, God gave to me freedom to make choice. Now, looking on everything, perhaps we can see more and more and deeper and deeper why Medjugorje. And uh, yesterday, the father who, had, who gave humility he tried to explain Medjugorje like a connection to the Fatima. And he, he made one film with the title Medjugorje, uh, the announce of the end of the communism, you know. And um, we need peace. And I, I ask now, why not in Medjugorje? Everywhere we need peace, and uh, why not to start from Medjugorje when, when our lady started? Uh, from the point of view of the education, because I see Medjugorje like a school of prayer, and the result should be peace, but prayer and fasting. And uh, this school of prayer, I tell you, perhaps it's, for, it's surprising me how our, 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 our lady is teaching us. No, she called us, and she's calling us to come to the apparition hill, to go into the nature, to open. We go to the uh, cre uh, hill, of, hill of the Krizhevats, a little bit suffering, you know, Calvary and so on. We have the church. So these three places are like you now a complete sanctuary. What do you say to those who don't believe, who say it's all a hoax got up by the Franciscans? Yeah, you know, if somebody looks or seeks arguments, it is no problem if he doesn't believe. Because we have many, I hear many arguments why I believe. And I bring my arguments, of course, everybody is free. But if somebody doesn't look seriously for the arguments, no arguments for him, you know. And uh, if somebody, you know, uh, thinks we, 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 because we were accused for, so, you know, manipulation, suggestions, money, rebellion, uh, uh, disobedience, and so on. But I'm now, I'm priest who is the longest, longest time, time here. 
since General 82. And my way to accept was to the studying, you know. I was studying this. And uh, I repeat always, if somebody comes tomorrow or today to explain to me everything which is happening here without Our Lady, I am ready to accept. But until now, I have not other, uh, not, not cho choice to accept something else. Yeah. What about the commercial aspects, the changes in the village? Does it upset you to see so much money around, so many people making money out of the souvenirs, the more commercial aspects of Medjugorje? Yeah, I said to you, I'm here all the time, and I saw the moment as of the commercialization, and uh, I was upset. Now I have not more uh, enough energy to be upset, you know, because I saw pilgrims are bringing, bringing this... Uh, this spirit of commerce, you know. And the, since I understood for commerce you need two persons who sells and who buys. And everybody who wants to avoid commerce, he can avoid it. And from other side I see it really like shadow of these happenings. And uh, from other side again, I, I have to accept, we have to accept the fact that people want to bring, to take with them souvenirs, rosary, medals, and so on, to the people who at home. And so for this reason, I leave it outside, and I try to pray here, to give exact information, to, to perhaps to help the people to understand the spirit of peace, conditions of peace. And then, then please be careful. Do not allow yourself to be commercialized. Yeah. And finally, and, and quite briefly, how important do you see the revelations here in Medjugorje, in, in the whole of church history? How important a religious event is it? You know, it is, so, it is very important because we are called to Our Lady, to the peace, because peace is not Catholic desire, or it is not special, something special Catholic. It is human desire. And the way to the peace is conversion. It means to change something in our lives. And we see all every politicians and all, all diplomacy has not uh, has not a way to the peace and uh, i think so people felt it's, it is something here authentic and people are coming and uh, this call to the peace will be so important on you know, the practical level how we give answer if we give answer it's okay if not but i hope it is the really really uh, a good way and uh, I hope many people are going this way and I hope for peace, yeah. Well, I believe that, that uh, the Mother of God has visited our world many times in the course of Christianity and it's, it's as important as any other uh, visitation of Our Lady or a portrait visitation of Our Lady in the history of the Church. But it's, also, it's always in the context of the overall call of God to, to give our lives to Him. And that's what Our Lady is calling. It, there's nothing new in what's happening here. It's the same as Fatima or Nock or Lourdes. It's a call from the Mother of God to God's people to return to, to, to Christian living. It's probably getting, to, well, it's, it's going to be sort of like you know, the last of, of, of the great sort of um, religious um, events in the world, you know, except for the, I suppose, the, um, the end of um, mankind, so to speak. Um, it's, it's the greatest because it's, um, it's asking people, it's telling people, hey, listen, get back to God, you know, and, you know, we, we're just dying, we're killing ourselves, and we've got to get back to God, and that's it. End of story, really. Over the last 10 years, the Franciscans have often had to defend the visionaries and their visions. Their main critic is not, however, the secular communist state of Yugoslavia, but the local bishop of Mostar, who doesn't believe in the visions and has fought the visionaries and their supporting clergy with all the weapons at their disposal. There have been no miracles, no healings at Medjugorje. It is all the work of religious fanatics. How do you know that people who were allegedly healed were ill in the first place? It is all a hoax. Whether what is happening in Medjugorje is true or not, surely it's good for the church in reviving people's faith. Ne. Ne.
I say no, no, and no again. It cannot be good to lie in order to make people believe. In the parish of Medjugorje, prayers are frequently offered for the bishop's intentions. Fast twice a week for the bishop's intention, for him who is carrying a heavy load. If necessary, I will ask for a third day's fast. Pray for the bishop every day. High on the hill of the apparitions, a Croatian flag flies in the afternoon breeze, a symbol of hope and defiance in this divided land. Dear children, you know I promised you an oasis of peace here, but you are not aware that around every oasis is a desert where Satan is lurking and he wants to tempt each one of you. Dear children, only by prayer are you able to overcome every influence of Satan in your place. My desire is to call you to take care of this oasis so that it always remains pure. Too many people are coming here, are praying and being converted, fasting and doing penance, and then they return home and quickly forget about it going back to their old habits. Too many people are coming here out of curiosity and not as pilgrims. I think uh, the world tension is as such that the only possible way that we can turn the tide will be prayer. And there is a deep desire for peace in every human being. And seemingly, there's no way that we can obtain this except through prayer. And we are convinced about that. Convinced that only prayer can help us. And on account of what has happened here in Medjugorje, uh, where we believe, uh, so far anyhow, that the Blessed Mother has appeared for 10 years, and that this place has something to tell to the world. And what she's asking us to is prayer, penance, especially attending Holy Mass and fasting and she feels and we f that we if we do our share we can definitely obtain the peace we desire it's only through prayer that we will be able to do so and the people here are willing to make almost any sacrifice wearing, wearing you know no shoes and going up the hill are willing to have, make any sacrifice to bring about that peace in their own homes and in the world. The world has forgotten the value of fasting and prayer. With fasting and prayer, wars could be stopped and natural laws suspended. Visiting priests have often said that one of the greatest graces they receive is in the hearing of so many confessions. All day long and often late into the night, pilgrims wait patiently to reconcile themselves with God. Many have not confessed for years. Our Lady has called us to take up once more the practice of monthly confession, as she has asked us to do at Fatima. She has said here that if people went to confession every month, whole Christian communities would be healed. One of the most extraordinary features of the visions is that they have continued for such a long time. This is without precedent for Marian apparitions and it has led some people to be skeptical for that reason alone. But if this is religious trickery, why make it go on for so long? Surely it would increase the opportunity for mistakes to be made. But so far, the visionaries have been consistent in their statements. Some people have protested that the Virgin messages are too difficult to live up to, but Mary tells us that the Western world has turned away from God and is living on the edge of a precipice. Radical measures are required to stem the flow of evil. Others say they find the messages trite and repetitive. 
but many see Mejigoye as a school of prayer. And if we have to become as little children, then surely we have to return to the classroom. Mary comes to us as loving mother, pleading with her wayward children, beseeching us to return to her son. She reminds us that even though she has been calling us to holiness for over 10 years, many have fallen away since their original conversion, and many are still so cold. Ivanka was one of the original six visionaries. Like Miriana, she is now married, and she lives with her husband and children outside the village of Medjugorje. Our Lady has promised to confide ten secrets to each of the visionaries. Ivanka has received all ten, and now has just one apparition on the 25th of June each year. Here, in her living room, surrounded by family and friends, Ivanka is alone in prayer with the Madonna, unaware of those around her. Dear children, I ask you to start fasting from your heart. There are many people who fast, but only because everyone else is fasting. It has become a custom which no one wants to stop. I ask the parish to fast out of gratitude to God for having let me remain this long in the parish. Dear children, fast and pray with your heart. Dear children, I invite you again to prayer of the heart. If you pray by your heart, dear children, the ice-cold hearts of your brothers will be melted and every barrier will disappear. Conversion will be easy for those who want it. You must beg for this gift for your neighbour. Later, she told Father Slavko that during the apparition, which lasted seven minutes, Our Lady spoke to her about the sixth secret. In the past, Our Lady has spoken to Ivanka about the future of Bosnia-Herzegovina. On the evening of the 24th of June, tens of thousands gather on the hills of the apparition to sing, to pray the rosary, and to await the Virgin Mary. Two days later, violent civil war broke out in Yugoslavia. Today I ask you to read the Bible in your houses every day and let it be in a visible place in the house so that it always encourages you to read it and pray. Dear children, today I invite you to pray the rosary with a deep faith. I will then be able to help you. Dear children, you wish to receive graces, but without praying. I cannot help you if you do not start on your way. It is important that you pray that the Holy Spirit will come down. When you have that, you have everything. Pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all of your families and your parish. On Christmas Day, 1989, Our Lady gave the following message. Dear children, today I am blessing you in a special way with my motherly blessing. I am interceding for you before God 
that he gives you the gift of conversion of the heart. For years I have been calling you and exhorting you to a deep spiritual life in simplicity, but you are so cold. Therefore, little children, I ask you to accept and live the messages seriously so that your soul will not be sad when I shall no longer be with you and when I shall no longer lead you like a child insecure in his first steps. Therefore, little children, read every day the messages that I am giving you and transform them into your life. I love you and therefore I am calling you all to the way of salvation with God. Tell the world not to wait. It needs to convert. When God comes, he will not be joking. I tell you that you must take my messages seriously. <laughs>